Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever it is that you are, wherever you may be. Thank you very much for making us a part of your day. I am Brad Franklin, creative content writer here in Chesterfield. And Chesterfield Behind the Mic is on the air once again. Uh, we are really excited to, to be back with you today. We've, we've obviously had a couple of episodes under our belt. Hopefully, uh, um, you know, as we go through this, we will continue to, to work out any of the kinks and, and make sure that we're, we're bringing you exactly uh, the kind of episode, the kind of uh, program that you're really enjoying. So the response so far has been great, and I really appreciate everybody out there who has continued to support the podcast. You've liked it. You've subscribed to it. Uh, you're definitely listening to it and watching it, which only gives me a little bit of heartburn, uh, but we're going to move forward. We have a great show playing for you today. Um, Mr. Jim Holland is with us, Chairman of the Board of Supervisors from the Dale District. First off, welcome to the show, sir. How are you? Wonderful. Thanks for having me today. I am really glad that you're here. I'm really excited to talk about some of the things that's going on in Dale, going on in Chesterfield as a, as a whole. Um, I guess before we get into, you know, into some of those, I kind of want to talk just a little bit about just, you know, your perspective, right? Yes. You've been here a long time, obviously served on the board. Um, you know, there's a lot going on in Chesterfield. Certainly, as, you know, the last few years, the last heck, 18 months have probably been the most, you know, unprecedented seems to be the word that everybody uses about, you know, the pandemic and everything from 2020 into this year. But I'm just curious from your point of view, you know, serving on the Board of Supervisors, serving the people of Chesterfield, what's it been like in, in terms of, you know, not just this last year, but over the course of your career? And, and how have you seen the county sort of change in that time? Well, it's been challenging yet exciting. Mm -hmm. It's been very exciting from the standpoint that we've seen so much, uh, so many wonderful things happen in Chesterfield mm -hmm. County in terms of the growth, in terms of development, job creation, right. economic development, uh, improvements throughout the county. And of course, it's all attributed to the wonderful people of Chesterfield County. Yeah. And so we're so excited. And I think uh, it's been challenging this past year and a half, given the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But Chesterfield has done really well and addressing the needs of the citizens mm -hmm. over this past year and a half. So I'm very excited about that. Yeah, you, as, the, as the Board of Supervisors has tried its best to, you know, not just figure out what those needs are, yes. but to address them. That's some of the things, obviously, that, that's going on in Dale. There's some um, un, kind of unprecedented, it, you know, we talk about that with the pandemic, but if you look at Dale, there's some, some really nice improvements that are coming. I want to first start talking about Courthouse Landing. Obviously, a, a huge uh, opportunity for the district. Take me through a little bit just in terms of the background on that. When did, you, when did that project first, first start coming about, and, and how did it sort of kind of come to be what it ultimately was approved by last year? Very good question. I would say that, that about a few years ago, we had several – actually, we've discussed this project for many years, but the last developer we met with was really exciting uh, in that he – uh, gave us a vision and shared with us a vision of what it could be. Courthouse Landing is a wonderful, really the biggest project mm -hmm. we've done in the Dale District, mm -hmm. I would say. And so I'm really excited about it because it's going to be a really high-quality mixed-use development with multiple commercial and re retail tenants. In addition, it's going to be also providing us a major medical provider, mm -hmm. which is something that's long overdue here Absolutely. in this district. So. I'm really excited about how it's come to pass. Mm -hmm. The fact that the Board of Supervisors approved this in January of last year, of this year, actually. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking forward to site development by the end of the year and this coming to fruition. Yeah. In the Dale District, which is uh, where it's needed, yeah. and certainly the heart of Chesterfield. Yeah, I met, you know, a lot of places, you know, in, in terms of growth, right? You, you would love to be able to, to, to say, okay, this, you know, this area needs this and this area needs that. Yes. Sometimes you have to wait for the private sector to sort of make that happen. Having, you know, medical, you know, offices in that specific yes. area of the county is going to be huge. You know, you're talking about a 124-acre piece of property, what, uh, $14 million, I think, in, in road improvements alone. Yes. Um, it, w in terms of the everyday life uh, of somebody who lives in and around, you know, maybe, it, you know, for folks who don't know, mixed use means – um, that you both have commercial, you know, as, you know, as well as maybe, um, you know, apartments or single house, you know, single homes, that kind of thing. Basically, what you're trying to do in terms of a mixed use development is you're trying to put all of the things that people would need in one place. So they have their grocery stores, they have their shops, but they also live there. So there, there's a lot more walking involved, not as much, you know, people drive into X, Y and Z. So a mixed use development, and especially in this part of the county, um, has a lot of potential. How do you see that being such a benefit? To the people of Chesterfield and the folks who live around there? Well, it will impact the surrounding neighborhoods mm -hmm. and others who visit the county complex as well. So it will be a great uh, addition to the county. In addition, 
we'll see an improvement in our road network traffic flow, mm-hmm. and we're also expanding and improving Nash Road extension to mm-hmm. courthouse right. uh, area. So it's going to greatly improve the, the traffic flow, the amenities, mm-hmm. uh, goods and services that the citizens need and expect. Yeah, And not only that, I mean, listen, the bottom line, too, is that, that there are going to be a bunch of jobs that are going to come because of this development. And also, too, you know, tax revenue is going to come because of this development. Yes. Um, in terms of the big picture, was this was this potential, you know, doing something with this piece of property, how big of a, um, a focal point was that for you as the Dale supervisor in terms of sort of the overall, maybe long term um, goal of the district? Because I imagine this was a this was a huge opportunity and to be able to, to, to be moving into that next phase now is really nice, not only for the folks of Dale, but also for Chesterfield as a whole. Absolutely. In fact, uh, when I first was elected over 14 years ago, that mm. was one of the major things I wanted to do is really enhance this area. Right. Uh, and, and you can see that it's continuing to grow. For example, we re- recently added Chili's and, of course, First Watch. Right. And that's greatly used by the citizens mm-hmm. in the area. So it's going to be a significant investment in the area, uh, providing great opportunities for the citizens to, uh, of course, get their needs met. Mm-hmm. So I'm really excited about it. So it's coming to fruition. Yep. It's been many years, but you yeah. have to be patient, yeah. and you just have to persevere through <laughs> uh, the difficult times, economic yeah. times, as well as others. Absolutely. I, I think that that's one of the things for folks who, who aren't as you know, accustomed to the way government works and the way these projects, you know, you have so many different, you know, this has to be surveyed, this has to be evaluated, this has to be looked at, then this has to be tweaked, and then this has to be you know, to, to, to be done. And there, there's a lot more than just, hey, let's build this thing right here, right? There's a whole lot that goes into that. Speaking of uh, a whole lot that goes into it, let's talk about uh, the old Buell Elementary School and the renovation that's going to happen there with the Recreation Center. Um, I think it's a 93-year-old yes. building. I mean, that's not every day that you take a 93-year-old structure and you're able to basically renovate parts of it and turn it into something that, you know, the community desperately needs. You mentioned amenities. That's certainly going to be a big focal point there. Um, talk to me about that recreation center and how that's going to be such a huge benefit to the folks who, who live in and around that area. Well, it's going to be a great enhancement to the area in that it has exceeded my expectations in terms of what we have planned. Okay. I must say I was really impressed because we took a school approximately 100 years old. Mm-hmm. We renovated it, revamped it, and kept the good parts, uh, the gymnasium, for an example. Right. We kept the cafeteria. And, of course, the athletic fields surrounding that. Right. So it's going to be significant for our youth, mm-hmm. our seniors, and just every citizen who mm-hmm. wants to visit a community center right there in their community. So yeah. it's a significant improvement. And that's coming to fruition as well. Yeah. Significant investment by the county. Mm-hmm. And so I'm so pleased that it's coming to pass now. The, um, you know, I, I know Bob Smet and all his folks over Parks and Rec, not just for the administrative space, but the mm-hmm. opportunity to, for programming there and to do all the different things, you know, between – you know, you're going to have youth, you're going to have seniors, and everybody in between that can can, can use that. Um, how long? I mean, look, it's a hundred year old building, right? So yes. there's, a, you know, that's a long time for 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 a structure to exist, let alone for for for, for the county and and for everybody to try to figure out what's the best next phase for that. What's its, you know, what's its future look like? Um, in all of the different options that that were looked at, what was so attractive about a recreation center, and why was that the the sort of path that that the county chose for that? Well, what was uh, significant to me when we renovated the building over several years, the la- one of the last renovations was a new gymnasium. Now, how do you discard a brand new gymnasium? So, as a result of that, we 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 knew we could keep that and should keep that. And, of course, add other amenities around the building and in the building and renovate it. And so it was also a great opportunity for Parks and Rec to, uh, to be housed there, to manage as well as utilize the facility. So it was really, I would say, a, a great opportunity once we built a brand new Beulah Elementary School just a few years ago, which was well needed. Yeah. Now, in terms of the overall sort of um, Parks and Rec plan, right, um, I can imagine that having this you know, this facility online soon and being able to offer that programming is such not just a, a gift in terms of the, what the, the people are, you know, have the opportunities to do in that part of the, the county, but also, too, even bigger than that is when you plug that into the whole network. How excited are you about sort of where Parks and Rec is in terms of the, you know, the big picture for as, it, as, that, as that group moves forward? Very excited because, as you know, we have a number of youth programs Mm -hmm. in the county of sports programs. And so it will figure into that. It will factor into having more facilities, a facility available to assist 
uh, in the Parks and Rec program and for our sports teams and for our seniors. As you know, our seniors are quite involved and engaged as well in Chesapeake mm-hmm. County. We're quite pleased with that. And as a result of that, we're able to provide a mentor that will help them get more engaged. For example, it could have uh, you could have computer classes. Yeah. It houses that as well for our seniors. So, as you know, we are really connected now. We've learned a great deal during the pandemic about being connected to the Internet and having activities and facilities in addition to our library, such as this uh, rec center. Yeah. So I'm really excited. Yeah. And in I mean, the Dale district, I might add. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. And then beyond that, too, you've got Cogville, right, coming online. Now, that's a little bit further down the road, but yes. that's, again, another piece of the puzzle for Parks and Rec in terms of you know bringing those amenities to people. Um, how long has that one been in the? In, I feel like that one's been in in the in the works for a long time as well. It has. We've been discussing that park for the last five years, approximately. We've done a lot of background work on it, a lot of planning, but it is an exciting amenity for that area. And I mm-hmm. have some citizens who continue to continue to remind me. I'm looking <laughs> forward to my park. And you, when you think about parks, you think about quality of life, and which right. is something we value very highly yeah. in Chesterfield County high quality of life yeah. it makes a difference right there and near their neighborhoods. Yeah. I can imagine all the things that you hear from people, you know, as you're going out and about in the community, mm-hmm. that parks and, and opportunities, amenities, that's a big focal point. Is that the thing you hear the most? Is that is that something that, that you hear uh, for a lot from a lot of people? Well, yes. What we hear about is what we can do to continue to improve the quality of our lives, mm-hmm. making sure that we have the amenities in place, mm-hmm. the facilities, and that's something we've worked on very diligently. And that's why in our new upcoming bond referendum, you will see money is provided next year. Mm-hmm. We hope to launch it for this, just that purpose. So yeah. very excited uh, to hear. And I always want to hear from citizens. Yeah. What did they need? What did they want? What are we doing well? What can we do better? Right. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of things that, that, that improve and change, one of the things you uh, the board of supervisors did after such a um, – you know, I, I don't want to call that unprecedented, too, because then, you know, now it's become cliche in this, in yes. this podcast. Mm-hmm. But in terms of the, the turnout for the 2020 election, you know, now, you know, we're in early election voting season. And one of the things the, the board did um, going into this season was to have more uh, opportunities for people to vote. And that's obviously, uh, you know, not just good for, for everybody who, you know, counts votes and, you know, tries to, to, to help that process work. But it's also good for all the people who want to vote. Um, what was the thought process in, in, in choosing those those um, uh, those uh, sites for, for the new voting opportunities? And how how do you feel like that's going to improve the experience for everybody as November looms? Well, the, first of all, I'm ex- really excited about this. And this is something that would approve this summer that mm-hmm. is going to be permanent now for all uh, major elections, all general elections. And what's really exciting about it is it convenience, as you mentioned, why convenience? Mm-hmm. And, of course, it makes the voting process so much easier we're committed, fully committed as a county to democracy, to voting, to ensuring that citizens uh, have the opportunity to vote for the candidate of their choice and to be able to vote and to be able to vote within a reasonable amount of time. And that's Absolutely. so very important. As you know, early voting started on September the 17th right here in the Dale District at yep. the registrar's office. That's right. So I've seen a number of citizens already yeah. line up and vote <laughs> starting September the 17th, which is exciting. Yep. In addition, the five sites that the board approved at our five libraries, what a great use of the library. Yeah, I was going to say that's a... It is a wonderful use. And, of course, the five sites are Clover Hill, Etrick Matorca, La Prade, Meadowdale, and North Courthouse Road. Mm -hmm. And so those sites are convenient throughout the county to a number of citizens so that in addition to voting on Election Day, which Mm -hmm. is coming up, they can vote earlier Mm -hmm. on on Saturday starting... Mm -hmm. October in mm-hmm. October, yeah, October twenty third, for example. Yeah, the um, the the voting for the folks who who might not know from eight thirty to five p.m. at all of those locations, uh, voting will will be obviously um, available to you in in those uh, in those localities. So I guess then the question is in the in the big picture. We we've talked we've talked about you know new new um, mixed use development, a, a new recreation center, new voting opportunities. Yes. Just just a whole lot going on. Uh, in Chesterfield in, in general, but especially seems like, you know, in the Dale district. Um, one of the things that I know is a, is a big focal point for you is, you know, trying to not just, you know, meet the needs of, of, of citizens, but to meet the needs of every citizen, right? Yes. In- inclusiveness, may, bringing everybody into the tent, so to speak. Um, how, how does that sort of help you as you go through your role with the Board of Supervisors in terms of, you know, Trying to not just, like I said, not just trying to, you know, meet, you know, meet this need or meet that need, but to meet 
all of them for all of the citizens. What's, how does that play a role in, in your view of what you do with the board? It's very important because uh, my role on the board is make sure that every segment of our community is involved, engaged, and informed. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I thank you for this podcast <laughs> opportunity yeah. to make sure we're sharing information that's, that's yeah. good for the citizens. And so it's very important to me that we work with and not just uh, answer every question, but make sure that we come up with information that the citizens need to hear and that's timely yeah to make sure they're aware of that so it's so very important yeah that that i'm engaged to to listen yeah and as i started my campaign one of the first thoughts and themes i had was a listening mm-hmm. uh, a, a supervisor who listens right now i'm speaking of you know uh unprecedented again i'm gonna keep banging this cliche but it just happens you know sometimes cliches are true um I, I would imagine that when you ran for the for the board of supervisors 14 years ago, and you and you started this this journey, you you probably never envisioned you'd be sitting here with me in front of all these lights doing a podcast. Um, in terms of sharing information, that has changed just so dramatically in the time that you've even been on the board, right? Um, how different is it now that trying to you know trying to share information with the public, trying to get them to un, to to know about all the things that are going on? Uh, it feels like there's more avenues for that more ways to connect as we like to talk about in communications and media but also too it just feels like there's a lot more to share right it just it has that that sort of sense to it how is that how, how has that changed for you in terms of kind of communicating with the people well i could say significantly first of all i want to compliment our communications and media department i want to thank them for their i leadership. did not do that on purpose their that was not planned in this I promise. area and you know when we think about Proven and excellence, we think about people. Right. And it all starts with and ends with people. And so yep. I, I just want to applaud that department for its vision, its innovation, its ideas, because I can remember when we communicated through just a, a newspaper. Yeah. Uh, and it was quite expensive. And so we had to evolve <laughs> from that, that. But now it's so much more easier. Yeah. The technology has really transformed and, and uh, greatly enhanced our lives. And more importantly, enhance the opportunity to uh, communicate and to share information. And that was one of the big things that I wanted to do when I was first elected, to make sure that we have an informed mm-hmm. and educated electorate relative Absolutely. to what their local government does. Yeah. Well, Mr. Holland, I very much appreciate your time. I'm very glad that you were able to be with us today and talk about Courthouse Land and talk about Beulah Recreation Center and obviously the, the new uh, voting opportunities for folks this month uh, as you know we get closer and closer to November and, and everything um, but I very much appreciate your time, sir. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me today. You have a great day. Yes, sir. My pleasure. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. So um, I, the election piece would probably have been where I, I started in the wrap. So I, I don't have that for you uh, this week. So we're just going to jump straight to, to my outro. Um, I, I want to say first, thank you to Mr. Holland for his time. Uh, thank you very much for, for joining us today. You can follow us on Twitter. It's... Um, at Chesterfield, Virginia on Instagram. It's Chesterfield, Virginia, all one word. You also can go check out our Facebook page for the podcast, Chesterfield Behind the Mic. Make sure you like and uh, uh, like that page so you can kind of keep up with what we're doing. You also can uh, check us out on all kinds of different platforms. You might not know it because you might be listening or watching this right now, but there are a whole bunch of other ways to watch us or listen to us. So if you're on YouTube, that's great. If you didn't know, Chesterfield.gov slash podcast is where you can not only watch our YouTube videos or, or excuse me, our, our podcast, but you also can listen Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Overcast, Google Podcasts. If there are podcasts out there, there's a service. We should be there. Um, so we very much appreciate all the support. Um, lastly, you can also watch us on WCCT TV channel, um, excuse me, 98 on Comcast, Verizon 28. Thank you very much for your time this week. For everybody here in Chesterfield County, have a good day, everybody. Take care.